In today's session, we'll be discussing one of the commonest inflammatory arthritis that we encounter in our practice. One of the most common inflammatory arthritis that we have that is rheumatoid arthritis. So the learning objectives of today's session, at the end of the session, the student must be able to discuss the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis, enumerate the articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, list the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, also enumerate the criteria, the ACR or ULAR criteria for diagnostic of rheumatoid arthritis and enumerate the treatment options that we have, the disease modifying agent, the biologicals which are there for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So let's begin the session with a case scenario. So here we have a 48 year old woman who has come with history of stiffness of the hands in the morning for the past four months, which is lasting longer and longer. She says that the stiffness now lasts for at least an hour every morning, which includes the hands, the wrists and the ankles. So here we have a middle aged lady who is coming with polyarthritis. So polyarthritis, multiple joints that are involved. and Along with the arthritis, there is stiffness. So moment there is a stiffness, we have to think how long the stiffness lasts. So here the stiffness is lasting for more than an hour. This classically is a feature of synovitis that is there. Inflammation of the synovium of the joint. So you have a synovial inflammation and polyarthritis. In a middle aged female, the most common arthritis that comes, especially when it involves the hand joints, is the rheumatoid arthritis. When you examine this point, this patient, you find that her vital signs are normal and there is swelling of multiple joints that you are seeing there, the wrist, the elbow, the ankle with synovial thickening. So synovial thickening is very classically seen in this patients. So this is an inflammatory arthritis. So there is synovitis as well as there is arthritis. So there is an inflammatory arthritis. Range of movement is decreased. So what is the diagnosis that we have? So a diagnosis is an acute or a subacute since it's going on for four months. You can say it's a subacute inflammatory arthritis involving the small joints of the hand and there is synovial inflammation. The most common differential diagnosis that you'd have is a rheumatoid arthritis. Other conditions could be reactive arthritis, but when the small joints are involved in synovial thickening, the first diagnosis that you'd want to think of is rheumatoid arthritis. We'll have to see whether the other features are fitting. We have a diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis based on the number of joints, based on whether there is inflammatory markers are elevated or not, based on immunological criteria and based on the duration. If that fits in, then it becomes rheumatoid arthritis. So we will be discussing about this. How do we diagnose and how do we manage a patient of rheumatoid arthritis in today's session? So what is rheumatoid arthritis? It is defined as a chronic symmetrical arthritis which is deforming. Now what do you mean by deforming arthritis? We have a large group of arthritis which can involve the joints but the deformities are not there. Like you say lupus where there is no deformities. Rheumatic fever, arthritis without deformity. But rheumatoid arthritis there is lot of destruction of the joint, the cartilage, the joint surface etc. gets destroyed and the periarticular tissues also there is damage producing large number of deformities. Predominantly involving the small but large joints also. It's a polyarthritis. What do you mean by polyarthritis? More than four joints are involved. And usually there is associated systemic features or extraarticular manifestations. So it's a chronic symmetrical polyarthritis which is inflammatory as well as deforming, including extraarticular manifestations. That's the features of rheumatoid arthritis. If you go on to the epidemiology of these disease, it affects almost around 1% of population. The uh, geographic variations might be different. It can be commoner in our part. It is also common in the Caucasians, etc. So geographic variations can be there, but it can involve as high as 1% of the population. Females are more predominantly involved, 3 to 1 ratio than males. Peak age, usually 45 to 65, but can occur in younger patients also. Please remember, 20 to 45 also you can have in early onset, but usually is 45 to 65. Smoking is a very important modifiable risk factor. Somebody who is predisposed, the genetic predisposition is there, family history is there and in such people, if there is smoking, that becomes a very important risk factor that is there for this. 
there is a strong genetic predisposition but uh, you have a smoking as an important risk factor which can be modified. 70% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis express HLA-DR4. HLA-DR4 is expressed in around 70% of the patients who are. Twins, there is a concordance in twins around 15 to 20%. So, if one of them has the other chances of other getting is as high as 20%. So, the genetic predisposition is very strong but there are environmental triggers as well as modifiable risk factors like smoking which contribute to the disease. So, what is the basic pathogenesis? So, there is an initiating stimulus that is there. Usually, it is a viral infection. It could be any of the viruses. Most common being mycoplasma, Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus, parvovirus or rubella. Now, because of this stimulus, what happens is there is an antigen-antibody reaction. Like what you see in acute rheumatic fever, there is an antigen-antibody reaction and the antibodies which are produced against a particular organism go and damage the particular uh, organs of the human body. It is an autoimmune disease. So, here when you have an antigen-antibody reaction that is happening, there is persistent T-cell activity, some sort of an autoimmunity mechanism. There is a molecular superantigen basis which is the uh, screening factor from the uh, viral infection that is there mimicry like what you see in acute rheumatic fever also and this autoimmune mechanism will stimulate the immune complex at various sites at the articular as well as the extra articular sites and that produces the manifestations. So, the severity depends upon what is the amount of joint involved, what is the immunological load that you have and that decides whether the patient has a just articular or a systemic concept. So, sometimes you can have a florid systemic onset of symptoms that is there in rheumatoid arthritis. That is basically because of the immunological load, the antibody load that is there and that presents with this manifestations. When you see the pathology, the characteristic pathological feature as we say is a synovitis. There is an inflammation of the synovium, chronic inflammatory synovitis and what we get is something called as a panis. Now, panis is an inflammatory tissue which will locally invade. It will go and invade the local structures, cartilage damage, the bone damage, inflammation of the uh, synovial tendons, the periarticular structures and that produces the deformities. So, in this picture you can see this is how a normal joint space would look like. You have the joint space, the cartilage there, the synovial membrane that is there. What happens in case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis is what is formed is a panis. This is nothing but an inflamed synovial membrane which starts bulging. There is increased fluids that is there and it goes and damages the joint surfaces, the cartilage as well as the surrounding ligaments and periarticular structures. Now, this panis is formed by inflammatory cells, the fibroblasts, the plasma cells, the dendritic cells, the lymphocytes and macrophages form together and that produces this inflammation. The persistent inflammation results in deformities and the deformities would last forever. Now, the persistent inflammation will cause damage to the neighboring tissue, the cartilage will get destroyed, the soft tissue gets into con uh, contractures, the weakening and distension of the ligaments and tendons and joint capsule, the muscle imbalance and chronically there is fibrous and bony ankylosis that is presented and that produces deformities. Various deformities are occurring in the hand and the foot, we will be discussing that in detail and that is the main point. The persistence of the inflammation results in the deformities. The deformities are because of chronic inflammation. So, our aim in rheumatoid arthritis management is to diagnose it early even before deformities are onset and start good disease modifying agents to prevent the spanus formation and prevent the progressive damage. So, the deformities have to be prevented. Once the deformities have occurred, we cannot do much. As we discussed, there are a lot of genetic factors which predispose the patient to develop rheumatoid arthritis. A strong HLA link is there with HLA-DRB1 locus. Non-HLA polymorphisms with PTPNN22 gene which encodes for tyrosine phosphatase, abnormal DNA methylation, histone modification, microRNA regulation all play an important key role. So, the environmental trigger is necessary, but there is a strong genetic predisposition which predisposes a person to develop rheumatoid arthritis. When we go on to the manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, 
In 10% of the patients, you could get a progressive disease. In 10%, you would get a monocyclic disease. Whereas in another 10% of them, you could get polycyclic disease. So you could get a progressive disease which keeps on increasing that is there. You could get monocyclic disease which could be just present in one peaks or you could have multiple cycles that could come of remission and uh, remitting and resolving phases in rheumatoid arthritis. If you go on to the onset of the disease, so how does rheumatoid arthritis manifest or the how is the onset? The most common manifestation is a slow and insidious onset. The patient comes with arthritis, malaise, fever, anorexia, generalized musculoskeletal, a very slow progress. Sometimes you can get an acute onset where the patient comes with a less than 4 weeks manifestation with joint stiffness, multiple joints together, usually seen in older age. You could get something called as a palindromic onset. So it's a very rare phenomena where you have a relapsing remitting form where a joint sequence gets involved and it remits in the same sequence back which lasts for a few days or a few hours and then the patient could be symptom free. Sometimes you could get a systemic concept, the joint features may not be there, patient may just come with extra articular manifestations, can come with nephrotic syndrome, can come with lung involvement or anemia that could be there and very very rarely monoarticular forms can be seen. So these are the various patterns, the usual, most of them is slow insidious, it can be acute, can be palindromic, can be systemic concept and very rarely it could be monoarticular. So what are the joint features they would come with? Most important is pain, swelling resulting in stiffness of movement, tenderness and difficulty in movement. And as I said, the morning stiffness is the most important feature, a morning stiffness which lasts for more than one hour is the classical feature of synovitis. If the morning stiffness is lasting for less than 30 minutes, it is usually due to secondary to periarticular structures like an osteoarthritis. They also have morning stiffness but lasts for less than 30 minutes. Whereas in rheumatoid arthritis, the stiffness lasts for more than one hour.